Adam, you'll start. Yeah, you can start whenever you're ready. Is it people still coming in? Or? I think some people might be just <laughs> stepping in too. Okay. All right. Let's take a drink of water. questions, all that. So, uh, my name is Brian Ellswick from uh, Sony, and I'm the sales manager for a new product that we have. So, I manage strictly this product called Kuv. Uh, it's a nationwide launch. We've been selling it in Japan and China for about a year, and uh, we just started selling it four months ago in the U.S. So, we brought it to the US, U.S. market, turned into an educator kit. Um, COOV, as I understand, doesn't stand for anything. It's not an acronym for anything. It's just a binary, ones and zeros, and engineers had fun and made a name with ones and zeros. So that's how the name COOV came up, because people ask me. Um, basically, it's a, uh, a turnkey kit that uh, provides, I'm going to stand up because I, uh, it'll just be easier for a minute. It's, uh, so it's a turnkey you know, education kit that provides 322 blocks, sensors, motors, servos. Uh, plus uh, software, which is cloud-based, runs on Chromebook, iPads, Macs, and PCs. We have all the hardware covered, um, and it's targeted for grades three to eight. So I'm, I'm aware you guys are way more advanced than this, but it's just making you aware of what's, uh, what's out there for middle and elementary school kids. So we've been uh, partnering and piloting this with some of the local school districts. Uh, you know, Poway Unified, San Diego Unified. I've been going to conferences nationwide, a lot of traveling, as you can imagine, to get exposure for it. You don't see commercials about it, so we're getting out to all the trade shows, talking to reseller partners, and uh, you know their sales folks are pitching it to their K-12. So I know there's a few uh, products out there, and this is uh, this is Sunny's answer for STEM and STEAM learning. So we're teaching uh, those skill sets for for kids. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, I'm going to show you a short video, and then I'll show you the uh, software that Kuv um, uses. Um, we'll go through that and we can do a Q&A. All my kits are out on loan, so I'm sorry I don't have one actual to show you. I very much apologize for that. Um, so they're just, they're, they're kind of in demand right now and I'm shipping them, you know, all across the country and getting them back, shipping them right out. So uh, I'll show you the video here and we'll get started. Hopefully the sound is, let me get the sound up real quick.
show them exactly what is an LED, um, where can I see it in real life, how is it relevant to me. And then we show them how they can use code to make it come alive. So at the end of the learning course, they have a, a really good understanding of what these individual parts are, how they work, how they can be used in their everyday life as well, and how they can combine them together to make it into something real. STEM education is very important to start these children off on this, this path. That way in the future when these new jobs come up or these new education or learnings, that they can actually be prepared for it. The environment that is created for the Coopers, where they go and they share uh, their different robots and their robot recipes, it is a safe environment. It is not um, accessible to the entire web. Any uploads that go onto it, when they put up their advice, there's a physical person who watches it from global education. They make sure that everything is checked before it goes up. This is not a toy. This is a tool to lead your child into steps towards their future. So just a three minute video, just wanted to get you kind of acclimated there. Um, we're gonna go in through, uh, into a lot of these um, topics in more detail, you know, in the uh, software. So um, any questions so far though? Anybody? Okay, we'll cover, we'll pretty much cover everything, but uh, if you do, just, just speak up. So um, as you saw the, the CUV core, that, that's an uh, Arduino board that we've uh, provided. So that's big for high schoolers, as you know. So it gets uh, middle and elementary school kids familiar with that. And you might have saw the drag and drop programming, a scratch-based programming that we use. So we're gonna, uh, a new feature is we're gonna um, unlock the syntax so they can actually see all the code as well. Right now it's just block coding. We've had that request enough that we're, our engineers are going to you know, allow the actual granular syntax to be seen. So they may be able to modify that, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so they ask the same thing. <laughs> I'm thinking like you. Um, I think we may allow that, I'm just not sure. If it's, if it's doable, we'll do that. Um, since, just an interesting side note, since we've sold this in Japan and, and China already, Mandarin and Japanese are built into Kuda, so you can actually change the language uh, we may integrate Spanish in the future, but since it's a U.S. only product right now, we're not shipping outside of the U.S., we're not even shipping to Canada or any other place or Mexico, uh, it's English based right now. Okay. But this is, uh, this is the same as like Sony Alpha cameras or Bravia TVs, this is going to be around you know, for the long term for Sony, this brand Coop. So in the uh, actual software that you get, again it's cloud based um, software, you don't have to stand up any servers infrastructure. Uh, once you buy Kuv, you get uh, you know, the software, you get, to, um, you get classroom management software where you can monitor progress of the kids. Uh, you get to create as many logins as you want. You can create a hundred logins for one classroom, even just for one kit. Uh, one kit supports three to four kids, so you don't, you don't really need that many logins, we just don't restrict it. Um, but you get uh, all of that, the support, the warranty, um, and, and the reputation and quality that Sony's known for. Um, so there's three modules in here that, uh, you know, my avatar, um, as you can see here, we, we um, make all of this anonymous, as you might have heard, it's a safe environment, we're COPA compliant, so that's, you know, Child Protection uh, Act, we don't allow any personal information from kids to be uploaded to the web. Um, when we go into free production, there's a community there, they can upload their robots, but the, on the only thing you'll see is maybe their hands, you don't ever see a kid's face in there just for identity uh, protection, okay? So I'm just gonna go quickly through uh, one, of the, one of the learning courses just to show you uh, what this looks like. Uh, normally these would be locked, so the kids would have to have kind of building blocks to get to the next lesson. Uh, this is a fully unlocked version, obviously. So they would start here, come over to this first module about LEDs, and it'll, um, it'll get them started on you know, what an LED is, as he talked about in the video. So they just go in here. The value is that we provide over 50 hours now of content that teachers can use from day one. They don't have to create you know, their own content. Um, and then teachers, once they unbox Coob, it's, very, um, it's pretty easy to use. Kids can use it on their own. They can use it in group environments. It's very flexible. So we've made it um, a kit that uh, could be, you know, used in the classroom in any number of ways. So it's loading up because it's cloud-based. I'm just running off the hotspot on my phone. Normally you'd be on Wi-Fi. So 
uh, it'd be a lot faster there. This is the uh, intro. We provide like the mission for the kid. Um, give them what any acronyms stand for here. Just get them in, uh, involved in learning right from the beginning. And then um, we're telling them what they're going to have to do. They're going to get their feet wet into coding. So this is designed, if they've never coded before, to understand what code is and what it does. Um, they also get one of these little helpers. There's three of these little guys that we have. This is the one I chose here. They're always there to help. You know, they can provide the correct code as well if they get it wrong, for example. And then uh, they would just uh, start, you know, looking for the green LED. We talk about the core, what it is, you know, just very basic here. Uh, battery box, which takes three AA, they can be off the shelf or rechargeables. And then the uh, cables that connect the LED. So they would just grab their food box, which is literally it's about this big, um, square box, about this deep. It's got, like I said, 322 parts in it, motors, all kinds of actuators, sensors, infrared parts, and things like that. And then it comes with a core. So they would grab all of this out of the box and build this. It takes just a couple minutes to build this one. It's pretty simple. But we just step them through what to do. <clears throat> And incidentally, there's seven different block shapes as well. So, um, you know, apparently the engineers have, you know, identified the best blocks to create the most number of robots with the least amount of parts. But the blocks are different colors as well. So you could build an alligator. You know, we got green blocks, or you could build a train with red blocks, for instance. So the steps are um, up the top left corner. We're on step five of seven, just connecting the uh, the LED and the battery box. Again, this is a, just a quick, quick lesson to get them uh, to connect an LED to the core. And then this is what our coding screen looks like. It's drag and drop. We have five different categories here of um, variables that they can use. And then the, the instructions are over here, also color coordinated. So they would just go to motion, drag over this LED, snap it in and just go on to the next screen. And then uh, they would go into a test mode. Obviously they would have this connected to the, to the PC or, or uh, Chromebook or Mac at this point. And you know, he's just talking about what's happening. And then um, it basically goes on and goes off. And then the, the challenge is how do you keep it on longer? So we introduce a wait statement here. Right, so it just gets them more familiar with additional commands, and that's what the whole, the whole purpose of this is. So they would go in there and uh, grab the wait statement. If they didn't correct, uh, correctly uh, um, uh, you know, select the right um, uh, command, then just say I, I put that there. You know, it's smart enough to know that it's not right, and then you can check the code if you want. This is what it's supposed to look like. So gives them uh, options to get it right and to, you know, just get it correct. So um, that is kind of basically the STEM and STEAM content, we call it, is all in this one uh, area here called learning courses. So we have over 50 hours of lessons in here and it's all hands on. So it's not just theoretical, but they're actually grabbing blocks and doing things with them. Um, so we want it to be very interactive and fun. Um, and just you know, just make learning fun for the for the kids. Is this a, like a, an app that you install on your computer? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, it is. So you would go to our support page, download it. It's like a thirty meg download. It's very fast, um, and it identifies what device you're on. So if you're on uh, if you're on an iPad, you go to the Apple Store for that one. If you're on a Mac, you download it from our page. It knows that it's um, you know. IOS or you know a Mac, whatever it is that you're putting it on, and uh, it'll it'll allow you to download the correct software. And then on, on Chromebook, it installs a Chrome app. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Chromebook is the biggest one that we've had the request for. So yeah. that's that's a differentiator of this product, is that we're compatible with all you know um, basically all um, um, device types, right? 
So we don't run on a smartphone because it's not really made for that. We want them to have a big screen, um, but it can work with touchscreen Chromebooks, non-touchscreen, iPads, big ones, small ones, PCs as mine here is, and uh, Macs. So um, we haven't had any requests beyond that. Um, there's hardly, I might have heard Android once, but it's just not very much requested to have this run on Android. So we didn't, we didn't do that. Um, all right, so the Sony engineer, that's okay. The, uh, the Sony engineers, um, what they did is they provided this area here uh, called Robot Recipes. So they designed and also coded 43 different robots. So we put them all in one place. So if kids want to go in and just build things and they want to hone in on their architectural skills and also modify code that's already designed, they can do that here. I'll just show you an example of what one of those looks like. Um, they can go into like this giraffe here, for instance. They're all different difficulties too. Uh, some are starters, some, some require code, some don't. This is a more advanced lesson and it requires code. So they all say, you know, uh, the category that they're in. And then we give a little description about what the robot does. And it, re it remembers I was in here before, so I'll start it from the beginning. I just want to show you the 3D modeling that we've integrated. This is a, a really big hit too for educators. They really like um, sort of like AutoCAD being able to rotate things three-dimensionally, um, zooming in and zooming out. So I'll show you what that looks like. And even while it's loading, our little guy here is telling them, you know, different things to look out for. Or, you know, just trying to keep kids engaged is our goal. You know, kids' attention span is pretty short. So we, had, we hosted a bunch of nine to 11 year olds at Sony. We're right in Rancho Bernardo, if you guys don't know that. Uh, you're free to you know, visit sometime if you like or get a robotics group if you wanna come. I can have you meet the team, take you around, that kind of thing. Um, but we had those kids in the class and they were, there was a ton of kids. <laughs> and uh, they did very well on their own. We got them started and then they followed the, uh, this, you know, the instructions that we provided with the modeling and they were, they were pretty uh, into it. So a lot of teamwork. So these are the different shape blocks and colors. Um, this is not all of them, but it's a lot of them. Um, so it's a very colorful kit. That's, I would say, another uh, distinguishing mark of Kuv versus other kits that are out there. Uh, we don't concentrate on really dark colors, you know, masculine colors like blacks and grays and claws. We've made things that are real fun. You know, girls and boys both like playing with it equally, we say. Um, and they're just, uh, like our alligator is probably the most aggressive thing. It's pretty cute. <laughs> so they would simply grab all the parts, the quantities are here, and uh, kind of organize those. Um, and this is the second of two pages of parts. And um, we even provide the eyeballs for the giraffe. And then this one, as you see here, it's got 62 steps. So it's got quite a few uh, steps to it. Probably take about an hour to build. Um, if you're doing everything right, if you get something wrong and you've got to rebuild it, it's going to add to your time, obviously. Um, but once you, this resolution's a little kind of quirky still, but as you can see, you can rotate this and uh, you can also pause it. Um, is it, is it focus on, or is it blurry or is that my eyes? I think it's just because it's white on white. Okay. It's no, you can't get any more clear, right? Okay. That's, there, there we go, that's a little better. Thank you. I just wanna make sure my eyes are not, <laughs> you know, losing vision. So uh, we, again, you know, talk about the servo motor. That's the servo motor here, it moves the feet up and down, and you gotta make two of them, times two. So I can leave that paused, um, so you can see, you know, the next step, and turn it in any direction, we can resume it. You can also zoom in as well, so, there's really uh, nothing that the kids can't do because of the uh, instructions. The magenta lines lead to the holes. Everything's very um, detail oriented. So anyway, that's a big hit. You can always click over to the giraffe here and go to the end result and you know as you progress, see what the giraffe's supposed to look like to make sure it's right. So you can rotate that as well and zoom in now as you saw. 
So we're going to fast forward to the coding section. Uh, obviously, you go through 62 steps, you build a giraffe, you have a giraffe that's built, and then you go into the coding. We always do the, the building first and the coding second. So we flip over to the coding with this toggle switch, and then um, this is just to show you an example of one of the robots, what the code will be. You probably, I know you guys are into coding uh, already, so this is, um, this is what the code looks like though for the giraffe. That, uh, that they're provided. So um, there's quite a bit to it, but what's cool is that they can come in here and uh, they could change any of these variables if they want, um, and then see what effect their inputs have on the code and the output of the draft. Another function is you could delete part of this code if you wanted to, maybe not that much. You could just delete a few things here. Um, like a teacher could delete certain things and then have the children troubleshoot what's what's going on. Why isn't the giraffe working? So that's kind of another idea we have for for who. Um, at any rate, they can build their own code, but we provide a lot of these uh, robot recipes uh, code so that they can borrow some of these techniques if they're not really good coders yet. Um, they can see why does the giraffe work the way it does. They can you know kind of borrow that uh, design for what they want it to. Right. Any questions? Yes. Is there sort of more in-depth instruction beyond just the like step-by-step -step assembly and here's the code from this? Mm -hmm. Like the. the or is that is that not the level that you're aiming for? It is the level, and that is more in the first module that we were in. We just didn't go through it, but we teach all about um, you know weight distribution, weight and balance, a, a lot, all the what they call next generation science standards in GSS uh, is in there, and what that really leads to is the um, the robot recipes. So they get the base knowledge in the learning courses if they go through that. And we have the robots in the learning course as well, so they have a path, you know, and so if they're learning about sensors, distance, like we have a camera that they can build, and they learn how distance is uh, integrated into the camera, and it, it leads on a, um, you know, a, a course where they're just, okay, that's why I need to learn about sensors because of this. So, yeah, we have the appropriate robots for the appropriate learning courses. Just, there's so much in there, I, I could only just scratch the surface, but you're right, that's, that's a good point, it, and we do. Yeah. And then the, the recipes are then, uh, once they've learned something, they can then quickly get up and running with a specific kind of robot and apply what they learned from the learning course. Right, right. Yeah, so we extract all the robots out of here and then some and put them all in the robot recipes. We just make it more convenient <clears throat> so they don't have to go through every STEM exercise in order to build. If, you want, if the teacher wants them to concentrate on architecture design and they don't care so much about STEM, they could go into the robot recipes. I think the logical course, if you want the full values to start with the learning course, go through the whole thing, you know, but it's a lot of time. <laughs> And then have fun with robot recipes, understand how the codes work. And then more advanced is, is our free production area, which is the third area I'm going to show you. So once they get really the mastery of uh, Kuv more, then they'll go in here and they can start designing their own robots and their own code too. So they would just simply go here and start. Um, they can start a robot with or without code. And then all of these robots listed here are on our Kuv community. So this is uh, something all we call Kuvers have access to. These kids are mostly in Japan and China because that's where we've been selling um, up until recently. And then they get rated by each other, by their peers on originality, design. And so like this uh, person with the gold, um, you know, they've gotten a lot of accolades and they've gotten moved up because of, of what they've created, according to the kids' preferences, right? So we have a translator here, because it's in Japanese, so you can, uh, you can see what it roughly says in English, the mosquito coil. It's supposed to like be a mosquito killer. I watched it once, and this was a pretty recent one too. You can also follow each other on here, the kids can, right? And they can also see what avatars they like and things like that. 
So this is all the badges that they've been awarded by other children. So we can watch, let me just turn the sound up. We'll watch the video and we can watch just a couple of these and you can get an idea of what kids are building. We didn't provide these recipes. These are original things. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of cute, you know. And uh, let's see, we'll do another one here. <laughs> yeah, I get a kick out. Of, they've had some really creative stuff in here. I just can't believe what kids come up with. I mean, this one really is interesting because there's parts that they've added to it that we didn't uh, intend, but. Like this thing, we don't provide that. They added string and everything. <laughs> Sky car. I thought that was really cool. So they got silver. Um, <clears throat> I mean, there's tons of stuff in here. Let's see what that says. And aerial tramway. So again, all the badges and awards here. Um, so there's hundreds and hundreds of different things in here. I mean, we can keep scrolling forever. There's a lot of stuff that's been uploaded. And um, again, it's all COPA compliant. It's a safe community for the kids. And they can, they can uh, you know, say they have code here. You know, they have sort of, um, they don't have personal names. Over in Japan too, I think they can IM each other. Whereas here, it's a little more strict. We don't allow that here in the US. It just depends on the country that you're in. So, but we have an actual human being that monitors requests to upload this and they have to look at it and approve it. So we don't allow all kids to just upload whatever they want. So it's very controlled, very safe. So that is, um, oh, and one other thing I'll just show you real quick. Let me pull another one up. Um, we can get one more example. All right, let's see what this is a video. All right, let's see what this is. It's jewelry vending machine. Okay. Oh gosh. It's interesting looking. And they did a little description there what what's supposed to be. I don't know how this is gonna work. Oh. Oh, they put a coin. <laughs> okay. It's like a trap door. So they uh, can share each other's code here. So that's, that's kind of cool. They can, so I can, I can go in here and uh, it'll pull up the code, the full code to make this thing work. Oh. So they can, they can share. So it's loading that, that child's code. How the code. the build directions? Oh, as far as like trying to build that jewelry box? Right. Yeah. So they would have, I have had that question come up. The kids would have to provide instructions and they're not really at that level to provide. And then they would have to do the 3D modeling, you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> to the extent that we've done it, it would be kind of difficult to do. They probably can, you know, tell each other things in the messaging. Um, but as far as being on the same level of what we do, um, you know, we don't, they're not really doing that, right? But it could be a future, enhancement, you know, possibly. So this is that child's code for the jewelry box, so. so. Um, and you can save code, you know, like I, I, could, I could go in and save uh, this code if I wanted to, download to your computer, you can upload code. Um, this is compatible with uh, the core, you know, the Arduino board, it can connect via USB, which we provide the cable with for, and then uh, Bluetooth. So for iPads, if you don't have the Adapters, you can still connect with Bluetooth. Okay. So that is pretty much the um, kind of the the modules in a nutshell. Um, I know you guys are very technical. You can ask me questions. I'll try to answer. I'm not like a big programmer myself. I've taken C in the past. I didn't really, you know, I didn't really enjoy programming <laughs> as much as other things. So I didn't stick with it. But I've taken some. Um, but I'm pretty technical, you know, if you want to ask anything. What's the cost of the kit? Yeah, so, 
Um, so Sony has to charge like an MSRP for everything that they sell, right? So the MSRP um, of this is $519.99. There's no licensing in the future to buy. Once you own the kit, you have uh, perpetual um, you know, use of it. You have the classroom management software, um, all the, of course, the blocks, the kit, the learning lessons. We just added like summer camp. Um, we have a robotics camp and we have some other uh, lesson plans that teachers can use. They're PDF formats and then they, uh, they, they're specific for who. So uh, we're constantly adding new uh, lessons and all of that's fully available for the future too. So do you anticipate schools purchasing this or individuals purchasing this? Yeah, it's, it's an educator kit. So it would be for schools. Um, it could be for libraries. Uh, libraries have shown interest. Um, I was just on a couple cruises and I met with their, um, uh, basically their area where they drop kids off, parents drop kids off. You know, that's an area where uh, I could see this being used. Any, any place that our after school programs are big. So those would be the main um, kind of areas that we're looking for. And I have had parents uh, or, you know, just uh, parents that teach neighborhood kids buy it too. Because they use this and charge other parents to teach kids STEM. Right, so they're babysitting, but they want them to learn something. So there's a lot of different applications for it, but it's not really an individual kit per se. It's more geared towards education. And then one kit serves three to four kids too. So um, they don't need a kit for every kid. So that brings the cost per kid down too. How many um, like components, like moving components, would you get in the kit, like servo? Uh, off the top of my head, um, there's there's probably a dozen or so I'd say that move around like that, servos and things. But there's also LEDs and infrared and mm -hmm. photo reflectors. Uh, we give enough to, to be able to build any of these robots um, mm -hmm. that that we provide, and a lot of them take a lot of blocks and they're pretty advanced. So. So like. I see two DC motors, three servos. Yeah. yeah, and I've been asked about like 3D printing. Can they print their own blocks? I mean, we can't really stop that <laughs> if, they, if they're that creative and they do something like that. Um, and going back to the cost, uh, that isn't, I mentioned our MSRP because we have discounts for educators, but that doesn't account for any education discounts or volume discounts. Um, that we provide. So those are also available. If you're a pilot school, then we have an, another discount for that because we ask them for um, feedback and we've developed case studies with uh, like Sweetwater, some schools up north. So we've got those case studies on sony.com slash couve. There's a resource page. You can go in there and, and download a lot of stuff already. So if you want to look at it um, or if you give me your card, I can email you stuff too if you'd like. So is it essentially one Arduino board per kit, or are there multiple Arduino boards? It's, yeah, kit? currently it's one. Um, we've had the request enough, again, that uh, they want more than one. So right. we're gonna we're talking to Japan to see if we can make that into a SKU just for a Arduino board, an add-on. We've talked about expansion packs and things like that, additional blocks. Um, but it's just since it's so new, we don't we've just launched the one kit. We really only have one SKU right now. We're developing a really nice. Um, kind of a luxury type case as well for you know, schools um, that's more durable, but I can see that being coming soon. Yeah. Right, I mean, if you got 20 million parts lying around <laughs> and you only use 30 of them, you know, <laughs> yeah, per board or do a board. You know. Yeah, I mean, and like you, you see here, like this dock, it doesn't have any code. There's a lot of stuff in here that doesn't require it, but the parakeet does. Some of them are attached as well, some are not, and um, yeah, like there's the camera I mentioned earlier, the lantern uses LEDs. Um, but yeah, to, you're right. I mean, that's why we that's what we're talking about it now to get it added. Um, so, are you able to install this into like a, like the this Sony ecosystem? Like, say, for example, like the PS4. Mm. Would you be able to put this in there? <laughs> Unfortunately not. It's a totally different segment of Sony. Uh, we don't really interoperate with PlayStation folks in any way, other than we're in the same building. Uh, I see those guys all the time, but we don't really have anything to do with PlayStation.
Um, maybe in the future, that's an idea. I mean, I'm not sure. What What are you thinking, though? Like, how do you see that integrating in some way? Like, I'm so curious. if you were to do a little big button, I can see hundreds of ways to convert this into a little big button. Because a little big plan, you have the, the cloud created. Hmm. So pretty much you guys can just build this in a little big plan where you can, I don't know, you have because you, you have the camera too, so uh -huh. you guys can like just physically, like in the 3D space, you can actually play with all this stuff. Yeah, okay, all right. No, that's good, and I like You also have the keyboard too, so I mean, you can technically, I feel like a PlayStation is pretty much a computer anyways. Right. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. I hadn't heard that, but that's that's what I'm hearing. Integrate with some of your games. That would be cool. <laughs> I, I play a lot, so Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm trying to think of what else I can tell you about it. <clears throat> you know, it's 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 doing pretty well. You know, it's just that it's so new. A lot of folks don't know about it. I'm sure you guys have never heard of it, um, and a lot of people that I talk to have never heard of it. So it's just getting the word out. Um, we have bigger competition, you know, out there that's been established for a while too. So we're, you know, going against that. But um, our strengths is that you know we work cross platform. You know, everything's cloud based. The block colors, um, we support more kids per kit as well, so it does bring the cost down. Um, and you know, the support, I think those are the, and, and educators are always looking for something new too. They want something fresh and new, um, and they get a little tired of the same old, same old sometimes, so. Who's your competition? Uh, you know, like Lego, I would say is the big one, right? The big kid on the blocks, they've been around for decades. So they have uh, Mindstorm, um, and there's there's things like Vex that are for high schoolers or more advanced, right? But we, um, you know, we're concentrating on three to eight. So as long as they're eight ages eight and up, that's what we recommend. And we've had kids younger than that use it. Um, sometimes they need help with the reading. That's pretty much the only inhibitor. But being, seeing things visually, um, and we've talked about like you know, maybe ADA as well, like integrating some, uh, um, you know, voice into the coup so they can just listen if they can't read as well. So there's that, so. You said you don't support Android right now, right? Correct. Um, don't lots of people have Android tablets still? Mm. Or is that not I mean, very popular anymore? Uh, yeah, not in schools, yeah. that's true. It's, it, yeah, that's why, it's because schools offer iPads, even though they're a lot more expensive. Um, I can't even think of schools that bought Andro um, Android uh, tablets. Yeah, yeah. Cause that was my, I used to sell that stuff before, so I sold into K-12, um, I sold both, but they always buy iOS. Really, Chromebook is really what they buy because it's so cheap compared to you know, the other options. So, how many schools are you guys in Japan or China? Oh my gosh, that I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I know what they focused on in Japan were the cram schools that they have over there. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have that here, you know, the same kind of paradigm. Mm -hmm. But in Japan, they have these cram schools, get them, you know, basically ready for tests and things like that. They, they really, uh, they really bought coup quite a bit in that, you know, for that purpose. So there's really no equivalent, you know, we're just selling to school systems, maker spaces like within the school, and every school is different and they're on a different trajectory and they're further along, some are further along than others, um, but we've met with most of the schools and I'm, I'm on a board of directors where I meet superintendents from all 42 school districts in San Diego County, I've networked with LA County Office of Ed, I work with San Diego County Office of Ed. So there's a lot of um, networking that goes on so that we make sure what we're providing is relevant. We provide the feedback to Japan, you know, how can we do this and that. But I'd say pretty much what we need is already there. It's just small little tweaks at this point. If that makes sense. So your immediate goal is to break into, basically start off in Southern California and then expand out for? Well, we, 
I mean, our goal is to have this uh, nationally, and we are, that's why we're at the uh, conferences, uh, like ISTE in Chicago, um, not too long ago, we were there, that's the big one for educators. We were there too. Um, what's that? Yeah, we were there. You were there? Okay, all right. So we were way in the, in the back. I mean, that's a big venue, right? Yeah. So I didn't even get to see everything that was there, but we were there. Um, we met a lot of folks there. Um, I'll probably be at SEPA in Sacramento. I'm going, you know, meeting with a lot of um, reseller, big resellers with their sales teams, teaching them about it, because they have to be comfortable enough to talk about it. So I built, not I didn't build them, but Japan provided me these little samples um, that I'm handing out to salespeople too. So they have, at least have a few blocks. And there's like a, a squid, an elk. You know, they're really small though. It's really ingenious how they can make something so small and they can put it in their pocket, show their customers what the blocks look like. Um, and then I'm, I'm always available to, you know, present this for customers too. So I just work different levels with the customer level, the schools, the resellers, and then I have a big distributor, so I have to, you know, talk to them, make sure, because they have salespeople too. So there's multi-levels, um, but this is, this is my product, so, and it's four months old, I've been at Sony for about four months, <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, I brought cards too, you guys can have a card if you want. Um, you know, we always welcome feedback, ideas. Um, if you have any, you know, if you have any leads for me that you have a school that's wanting to implement STEM and they don't have a solution, you know, I'd love to talk to them too. So, um, we hardly ever get any negative feedback though. It's, it's been very positive. It's just the school's trying to find money to fund uh, STEM kits like this. You know, that's the challenge for a lot of schools, is just funds. So we just started an externship program for teachers. We invited, um, I think it was six or eight teachers to Sony, and we taught them about you know go-to-market strategy, analyzing you know various business um, uh, practices and things like that, so they could um, bring food to market as an example. And they did a presentation. Our CEO was there. Uh, they learned quite a bit, you know, about business business skills. So we're going to keep that going, and we're looking to do you know outreach and you know, meet with uh, different agencies where we can talk to kids about career paths, like learning STEM, this could lead to being an engineer at Sony, for example, you know, something like that. So we're trying to encourage kids. Um, so, and we feel like this is a good uh, kit as well to teach. I, you know, if I were you, I would try to go beyond block program. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's great for the age level where you're targeting, but, mm -hmm. but at a certain point, kids are going to get bored with that and mm -hmm. want to move on to more sophisticated stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, Arduino is a, a pretty easily learned environment that, mm -hmm. that people can easily conquer. Um, I think that that would be the next step, is to open up that path and, and get beyond just yeah, 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 so that's, I think that's why we're gonna open up the code, you know, but I think for the ages that we're trying to target, um, you know, especially elementary schools. Well, like I said, um, but, you can, you know, what, okay, what? so so you got the kid hooked. Yeah. And now, <laughs> now, now, now what do they do? Where do they go from there? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, they could, uh, they could stay with it, right? If they had more coding, um, they could build more complicated things, right? So. And the other thing I would do is, you know, okay, so, so if a school buys five of these kits, mm -hmm. but the parts are all small, and I'm sure they're bound to disappear over time. Mm -hmm. um, so having a, a a method of restocking those or yeah. buying certain parts that we need um, to be able to, like I said, um, have multiple Arduino boards mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with a kit or, you know, with, you know, say I buy five kits worth of parts but 10 Arduino boards or something like that so I can mix and match. Mm -hmm. um, that would certainly help, I think. Yeah, we just have to, we just have to get this few thing done uh, for that. The Arduino board is probably going to be first, 
and then we'll probably have expansion packs. We have a customer service department that can provide parts right now, so we haven't really had that as an issue. So if parts disappear, you give them away for free? Um, not, we can't be abused, right? Yeah. I'm not gonna go for well, that. I but if it's onesies, twosies, then, you know. Um, but we really don't have any breakage. They're, they're pretty tough parts. I mean, um, if they disappear for other reasons, and that's another problem, right? I they're bound to, right? Kids yeah. Kids can put rocket and walk off and yeah. forget about it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think we'll probably have expansion packs, or they can buy, you know, they can obviously buy multiple coups too, you know, to allocate extra, but, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. Do people good. ever complain about the pricing though? Uh, uh, could, it, could it be like, if costing 500, that's $200 more than Dex IQ. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's 150 over Mindstorms. Yeah, it's a little over 100 over Mindstorms. Uh, and Mindstorms are our main competition. They, they support two kids per kit. Um, we support really could do four. So our cost per child is lower. Um, we don't really have too many complaints because of all the value that we bring and all of the content. And there's nothing more to, there's nothing more to buy into the future. Um, there's no licensing, you know, the cross platform, everything that goes into it. And it, we do provide uh, some professional development as well, you know, get them started to get teachers, you know, acclimated uh, with Kuv. So we can do, especially on site here um, in this area, we can do, you know, assistance and partnering like that. But every school doesn't have the money, to your point, to buy Kuv. You know, I get that. And there's been schools that have opted for really, really cheap, you know, kits. That I, and I've just I've asked for their feedback. What did they get buy? And it's it serves one purpose, but it doesn't teach them, you know, all of the STEM that we're providing. So. We try to make it, uh, and we do have, like I said, that doesn't account for the discount. So we, we don't, that's, that's like full price with no discount. So normally a school would go through the reseller. The reseller would provide uh, discounts so that they win the bid. So a reseller can discount it quite a bit uh, lower as well. So they, they could pass that savings on to their customer um, so they can get the price lower. So I don't know if that's, Pretty much, like, and if it's you know, say a big opportunity, you know, 100 kids or something like that, I can I can work on special pricing, as long as it passes our financials. You know, I'm I'm happy to be flexible and you know, and negotiate that with uh, with customers. You know, like your LAUSDs or San Diego US, USDs, the big you know, big schools, they might need a lot of kids, right? So, good questions. Um, any any more? Hopefully, this was. Did you have one? Don't individuals buy blind storms at, at this point still? I mean, yeah, there's. Yeah. I feel like, especially our demographic of students, like the students I was teaching earlier, mm -hmm. we have four that's like new kids. Yeah. So, I mean, there's only two of them, but they have four kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I, I know you guys are targeting just the schools at this point. If you can bring that price point down, you can start targeting individual, I, I mm. would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because that would be a, I mean, I, I can see, <clears throat> with a share kit, sure, it, it is useful, but, mm -hmm. but to get all of the value out of all the learning lessons that you guys have, mm -hmm. um, having a dedicated kit for a kid, more ideal, right? right? If they right. had their own kit, obviously. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I think you need to bring the price point down. In order mm -hmm. to make that realistic. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't see a lot of, well, some parents would put out that much, but not, right. not many. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends on the family. Um, I think I think parents buy what's important too, right? They'll buy a phone probably for that, or you know, iPads are 800. <laughs> It just depends on what, or gaming even, you know? I mean, they're, they, those add up, right? Sure. Be $60 a pop. But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's a good, 
we're, we're keeping, you know, it is new, we're keeping everything in mind. Um, we're working with uh, a few big partners where we can break into the individual home, uh, you know, situation like homeschool. Uh, we may be doing something to that end as well. Um, they, they want food for their, their customers. Um, you know, today you can go to sony.com slash coop and you can buy it on our website. So you can buy it direct and uh, you, you got to use a credit card there. Um, whereas with a reseller, you know, you'd use a PO for a school. They don't really use credit cards too much for big, you know, big purchases. So, <laughs> yeah, any other, any other thoughts or questions? <laughs> Can you make any sound? I noticed there was a trumpet there and a microphone. Can you make any sound with this? Yeah, yeah. Like one of the that one video we saw, it had uh, different tones and sounds um, because of the uh, which video? The mosquito. Yeah, the mosquito. mosquito. Yeah, and I haven't made the maracas. maracas. Oh, they're maracas. I thought it was a microphone. It was such a maraca. But it probably does make a sound though. Yeah. You know, shake it. I'm sure it does because they. They are able to make sounds, so I'm, I'm sh if I made that, I'm sure it would function that way. So yeah, it, it, they do. Um, and that's all the code, you know, controlled by code as well. The sounds. <laughs> Is there a knowledge base or uh, way to get support for the instructors? There's there's the the section of the software where kids can share their mm -hmm. creations, but if if in if there's no, for example, like 3D model, and they can't give the instructions, mm -hmm. then uh, the instructors are going to be maybe stuck for creating new robots. Uh, like they'll have to recreate them over and over rather than being able to share. So right. Is, is there anything for the uh, more like the mature? The more advanced folks. Um, we don't have it today. We are working on it. Like a forum, you know, for, for educators. Yeah, that's something that's that's an active, you know, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> it's like high on our list as well. Yeah, it's a it's a good idea, and uh, we agree. You need a you need a forum for educators to go to, you know, to chat or whatever they want to do. Right, share ideas, you know, help each other. Yeah. So you've got static blocks. You've got motors. You've got. Mm -hmm some type of speaker system. Mm -hmm. um, do you have sensors or what else is there? Yeah. 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 Coder diodes. yeah. Okay. Infrared sensors as well. Photo reflector. Uh, like we have a train you can build and it uses a sensor on the bottom to trace the, uh, you can draw a line on a piece of paper and it'll okay. follow it. Mm -hmm. Mine's uh -huh. Exactly. Um, you know, this uses uh, sensors for proximity and flashes as well. So, flashes once it gets close enough. Um, sometimes they use actual wheels, and then sometimes they walk. Like the dog, it actually does walk with its legs. But the hippo, it has legs, but it uses wheels underneath there. But its legs will like move up and down. So the hippo is very random too. Like an actual hippo, it acts a little crazy. It'll just be sitting there and all of a sudden it just kind of goes berserk a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, and then the whale shark has a clownfish buddy like in real life and it has an accelerometer in it. So if you turn it forward, the whale shark will move forward. You can go backwards with it, with the clownfish or sideways. Um, I haven't made the guitar, but I think that makes some kind of sounds as well. You know, I just haven't had the time to do all these, uh, but it's, uh, you know, I've made a few. I made the ship. Could you test this with, um, like, the whole idea of uh, multiple kits with the kit already? Yes. How did that go? It went well. Yeah, that's that's our pilot schools that we, and we wrote the, t the case studies up based on that feedback from uh, the principal, the teachers, directly, so. You had four kids to one kid, or? Yeah, usually three, three to four. It could be four, but um, three's fine, four is fine. So, so during the building process, where are the? The roles? Just, yeah, like the, yeah, so. Especially because uh -huh. when I was looking at the instructions, it was kind of, it, it looked like you, know, you need the previous step to mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. So you, you couldn't really 
Yeah. Okay, you do step one. <laughs> pass it on to him. Now, what we two. what we recommend is it's yeah. What we recommend is we have as an example. You can have one child be um, like a block organizer. They grab all the parts, make sure they have all the correct stuff to start off with. You can have another kid building, right? Following the instruction, three D modeling. There can be another child for uh, Q and A or QA, you know, quality control, quality control, make sure, an inspector, so to speak, to make sure that everything's being done right. Because if a step is missed, uh, they have to go back and start over, and it has significant time, you know, to get behind. Um, so those are those are just example roles, though, um, that they could have, you know, builder, coder, organizer, inspector. Those are four, you know, that we we recommend when we have group environments. I think you don't teach them how to actually debug their code, though, do you? Um, I mean, there's no e real easy way with an Arduino other than a printout, right? Oh, uh, like when they're doing their own code, their own original yeah, code? Yeah, right. <laughs> so you, you're um, trying to find out what's going on, how do they debug their code, right? Well, they, yeah, that, not so much, right? Because they have to, it's going to be original code, so there would be no way we could for any code that any yeah but there's no way that they can do like as a programmer myself uh -huh. I've got tools that allow me to stop the code and yeah. look at variables and uh -huh. other things and I can see what's going on I mean, even with the Arduino you yeah. just have a serial number yeah you've right? got to you can print out stuff like yeah. the value of variables and you can figure out what's going on right? gotcha. you can't really do that here right it's there more it's going to be a trial and error there's a test mode that we oh what there's a test mode that they can they can uh, Test their code. Yeah. Um, so what is that? Let's go is on. it like a simulator or what is mm, it? Let's <clears throat> say. I have not myself done that, so let me see here. Let's just go in and just check real quick as an example. Um, because I'll bring up these things if there's things that we need to look at still. Mm -hmm. I, I'm at, our uh, Japanese guests are actually coming tomorrow. Because they may develop some there. really bad habits if they're like just randomly <laughs> or by trial and error right. changing lines of code and inserting them. That's like really <laughs> a bad habit as, a, as an engineer, as a software engineer. Right, so. right. All right, let's just see here. I'll just go into, go into this. They built something with code. Um, so we have a troubleshooter page. Uh, let's see what it. Let's see what options it gives us, though. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and thanks for uh, you know having me here too. I know it's uh, you know for younger a younger audience, but hopefully it's been interesting to know about that Sony's into this. Mm -hmm. uh, give that a minute to load. Does Tom work with you? What's that? Does Tom work with you? Tom? Yeah. Who's that? I guess not. I I don't know. Uh, you mean with Ku? Ku uh, with. Well, he's a Sony engineer, isn't he? Oh. Isn't he? He's with PlayStation. Oh, he's PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, so he does work there, then if he's, I mean, more than likely he works there. <laughs> he's an engineer. But they have three floors of engineers there, which is PlayStation. So they have the most people, I think. <laughs> it's quite, yeah, quite large. Hmm. Um, so, let's see. I mean, if you just started. <coughs> Start to go together. <laughs> What's that? Throwing things together. Throwing things together. Yeah. Let me just see. See if we did. I don't know. Uh, we, we could do an end statement, right? I guess. But I'm also assuming that it's possible to generate a, a sequence of uh, blocks of code that will actually cause the Arduino to crash. Mm. <laughs> so how do you know? Oh, there's a breakpoint. Yes, there's a breakpoint. Right. That's so. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'd have to have a coup connected to, which I don't have. So that would have to be connected. Um, let me ask about that because I'm. I'm just not sure. It's a good. It's a good point. Um, if there's a troubleshooter, you know, um, area for the code. Right. Oh, I see. There's a breakpoint there, so it probably stops there. And then are you allowed to inspect variables or? Mm. See, normally that's what you would do as an engineer. You put a break mm -hmm. point where you, mm -hmm. and you kind of just keep setting the break, moving it around, and then you look at variables and you, or the state of the code, and you try to figure out what's going on. 
I see. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not positive about that. Yeah. How that would how that would work. Yeah, then if you actually go to real C code, right? If you start programming in C code, you're gonna need that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I remember that from when I took it. Yeah. What is the, the syntax language that you guys are going for? Scratch. Scratch. Uh, oh, I mean, after for the text po uh, text coding portion. It's in Arduino, right? So, so, so C, C, C++. 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 Yeah, you guys know more about that than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it was Arduino, then it would be. C. What kind of Arduino is this? What's up? What, what kind of Arduino is this? Arduino Uno? Um, I think it was, I want to say it was version 2, does that sound? Well, it's that? probably just a uh, Arduino compatible design that they made themselves. Yeah, but it's probably like okay. Uno okay. with an Uno. Yeah. It has to follow a standard, right? Yeah. Right. I want to say 2, because I had to ask that once. What's the, the, oh, that's test mode. I thought yeah. it said text. Yeah, test mode. And uh, yeah, we could send this to the core, try it, you know. But um, that might be something we do when we open up the code more, you know, mm -hmm. like the troubleshooting area, yeah. when we open that up and see the syntax. I'm gonna ask that tomorrow when I see these guys. Mm -hmm. They're flying in, so um, I'm gonna check on that. That's so did you actually download that and run that? No, because you need the core. Oh, oh you're not, yeah, you don't have it with me. Yeah, yeah I don't have it with me, but you would just have it connected yeah, yeah, to USB, yeah, right. uh, and then you could upload this. Mm -hmm. Splashable. How many things can you have connected to the crew at a single time, like with your external components? Like there's, um, there's quite a few inputs and outputs on the actual core, you mean? Like how many cables? Yeah, like would um, I be able to throw like... 15 motors on there and actually have all 15 work? Or 15, like not, can... probably not 15, no, no. Um, I think there's like inputs, outputs combined, there's about 10 or so on there. I'm just going by memory. Oh, I meant like connected to the board itself. Yeah. Like because you can't have like, you can't put like 10 motors on like some of these robots because it draws too much power. Right. So would you be able to put like, you can, so you got You could fill up the banks of uh, inputs and outputs. You know, because we don't, yeah, I mean, you could, if you had a function for everyone, you could fill up every one. It wouldn't, it wouldn't overtax the system. It's just that I don't think you can run that many motors concurrently either. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, that's what I was asking. Like, can you put, is it like you have five dedicated ports for inputs and then five dedicated ports for outputs? Um, let me see. I can find that. I don't know if that, that I don't know off the top of my head how many are de dedicated for each. Um, uh, Y'all are asking me some more advanced questions, <laughs> <laughs> which I would expect from a robotics club. <laughs> it's really challenging me tonight. Um, let me see if I can just get a. Uh, let me see. This is my deck. I don't know if it's going to have anything. Uh, that specific. Let's see. Um, let's see. So those are all the parts you guys were asking about earlier. Sensors and actuators down there at the bottom left. Oh, okay. That's you know everything that's in the kit. Um, let me see if it talks about. The, I don't think it talks about the core very specifically on here. Um, that's what the kit looks like, you know, on the top right, that's the box that comes in and all the parts that it comes with. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was in there. I'll have to research that one. I, 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 I want to say it's about 10 ballpark total, but how many are inputs and outputs? Um, usually it's less inputs than outputs, right? I mean, it depends. I mean, some people prefer sticking like 30 motors on your robot and <coughs> does the kit come with batteries or is that something an additional cost? Uh, it does not come with batteries. <coughs> what kind of batteries do you recommend? Um, it takes three AA and they can be off the shelf starter cells or you can do rechargeables. So you could insert a light bulb back in there? Um, gosh. I mean, a LiPo pack, like, uh, for RC cars yeah. and stuff like that. I don't know if that's compatible. <laughs> 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 I 
Jim. <laughs> Just burned out the DC motor. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say you can. I mean, you guys would probably find a way to do it, I'm sure, to modify it, but I, I've never had that. I, I don't know if that's if that would work or not. But we are. Yeah, but in the future, I, I do want to get uh, this would be a rechargeable battery pack, so then have to put batteries in it. Yeah. I know that's an additional cost, so we're working on that as well. But um, there's always these different you know, regulations you got to go through, even for one part. So coming from Japan, they have to get cleared for like every state. Every state has different laws. One new part comes out, they got to go through 50 new certs, you know, mm. so it's quite, a, quite an ordeal. Mm. Um, but that's just how it is. So I think that'll be coming in the future, that's a rechargeable battery pack. It's one thing I've requested. So I think I've taken more than my time. Sorry to keep y'all so late, but. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much, you. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you.